imagine microwaving your armpits? Well, lots of women are doing it. In fact, it's a big trend on social media right now. Look who's live with us in the house right now. Dr. Mehmet Oz visiting Detroit today. He's back at Broadcast House to talk about microwaving your armpits and some other topics on our show. Dr. Oz, welcome back to Detroit. So good to have you here again. I always love it. Thanks for having me. All right, before we get to the microwaving of the armpits, I'd love to talk to you about the news that came out this week that the World Health Organization came out saying processed meat, such as bacon, sausage, and, uh, and what else were they talking about? But some processed meats, yeah. ham, I believe, may cause cancer. You're going to tackle this on your show today. What are your thoughts on it, Dr. Well, Oz? it's a big concern. We've had fears about processed meats because they have nitrates in them. It's a preservative that's used in, in things like the bacon you mentioned and, and the ham and sausages and half dogs. But the deeper reality is, is how much of a risk is it really? So the World Health Organization has a, a group that they pull together, scientists that look into these issues, and they have decided that these nitrates are so risky they want to equate them to smoking cigarettes. And that's where the debate really rages. And we all, I think, agree that there's a risk to them. The question is how big of a risk is it and they, are they really as bad, for example, as having a cigarette? And I think if you look at the numbers, Roughly speaking, in order to increase your chance of having colorectal cancer, which is one of the big ones, by 18%, you'd have to have roughly one and a quarter hot dog. You'd have to have three pieces of bacon every day. Uh, you'll have six pieces of ham every day. So uh, it's not a, uh, you know, a difficult to stay below that number. Plus, not all these processed meats have nitrates in them. So you can buy processed cold cuts, for example, that don't have nitrates, or you can make your own pork belly-based bacon and avoid yeah. some of those nitrates and probably be okay. You know, it almost sounds like moderation, which is what we hear a lot. Just be careful about how much you're eating. And on the same note, we talked a little bit about red meat being considered a carcinogen, perhaps. Your take on that? Well, red meat was a different category. Again, it's a little bit of a risk, we, they believe, when they did this research, but it's not nearly as strong as it is for nitrates. You know what the okay. big risk, uh, Joanne, is? When you char your meat. So if you're going to have a barbecue, but marinate the meat first. Just don't char it. It's those charred elements that are dangerous. We don't think the rest of the meat is nearly as much of a problem. All right, very interesting. Let's move on to this microwaving your armpits. Please explain. People are, I'm sure, conjured up images of putting their arms in a microwave, which is, I assume, not what we're talking about here. Well, not quite, but it is the same kind of energy. Here's, I actually learned this from my friend Wendy Williams. Both of us have a problem that we were sweating under our arms. And she convinced me to look into this, and she actually had it done, and she's been public about it. Uh, and it actually works. You have this device you put under your arm. It microwaves the glands uh, under the arm, so it takes care of both the smell uh, and the hair, as well as the sweat. And that's why women are having it done more commonly. They use a, a local anesthetic so it doesn't hurt that much. It gets a little bruised afterwards. But as you can hmm. see, the pattern that's left behind, it's uh, pretty organized and it doesn't leave a scar. So it's something that can what? be done uh, relatively uh, without too much invasiveness. All right, with a special machine at your doctor. And I know you're going to be talking about that tomorrow. So we did get a Facebook question, Dr. Oz. People always have questions. And this came from Susan. She said, I have fibromyalgia since 2007. What do you recommend? I'm having a hard time treating this. What, what do you think? She says she's a nurse and it makes it hard to work sometimes. Well, first of all, thanks for being a nurse. The whole nurse nation yeah. has been so wonderful uh, in supporting all the health of this country. Unfortunately, when nurses put themselves out and, and get taxed, oftentimes they develop their own problems. Fibromyalgia uh, has a lot of different causes. Doctors used to ignore that it was real until recently, but it is real. Uh, things that seem to work are physical activity, although it's really hard because you have pain all over your body. There are new medications that are out there and they seem to have some effect as well. But you know, one of the core things is to deal with other things causing issues in your life. Uh, I look at that Facebook question just before she came on. And I think she lost her husband recently. The mm. deep pain that you have, emotional pain, is and when you don't process it especially, your body wants to tell you about it. And so if you don't deal with those other issues, it'll come back and try to haunt you. And sometimes fibromyalgia is the way that it presents itself. One this concrete idea, there's something called D5-ribose. It's, it's an alternative to sugar that for some people with fibromyalgia seems to help them because sugar is a big issue. Sugar makes their pain worse, makes their fatigue much worse. Fascinating. Dr. Oz, thank you. As always, always great information when you're here. You can watch the Dr. Oz Show this afternoon and every weekday at 3 o'clock right here on Channel 7. We'll see you soon, Dr. Oz.